And, and Mark, thinking about particularly the education world, but, but really everything that has been so affected by the pandemic, obviously, we all know this, we've been living it for the last two years, but how we educate, how we work, working from home, you know, virtual, all of those things have accelerated what might have happened, what most of us think would have happened anyway. But I just wonder what impact that speed and that acceleration has had on what you will and won't invest in. Because perhaps things you might have thought about investing in two years ago, you'll now be thinking, that's old news. What's, what's coming, you know, like how fast, are we slowing down now a bit? Or is that speed and acceleration continuing to double at pace? Oh, I think, uh, you know, we live in a world of accelerating change and that's just how it is. Um, you know, the pandemic obviously accelerated some digital adoption even more and particularly in, you know, developing markets where things were taking a little bit longer, they were forced to move online, whether it's delivery of food or whether it was education yeah. and so on, there's just no other way to do it but that way. Uh, and, and we have seen some reversal to mean, so some people who were kind of forced to do it, didn't really enjoy it, went back. So that, that kind of a change we see. But we think now people have kind of tasted what is convenience, and so we should expect, uh, you know, accelerating adoption in the future as well. But in the way we see it, you know, I think we go back to the basics. Look, yes, you got an accelerated uh, adoption curve, but fundamentally, do you have strong market fit at economics that can sustain over a long period of time? Because part of this is when things went back to the offline world, you saw that some of these were not really sustainable uh, in the way they were. People are compelled to use something they did, but they didn't really yeah. enjoy the experience and so they went back, right? So those That's kinds true. of things, we are now able to separate out what really sticks and what didn't. That's really interesting. Tilly, I saw you nodding. Yeah, no, I, I think that's right. I think the pandemic uh, also introduced new ways of living that are here to stay. Uh, one of which is uh, a virtual hybrid uh, world, right? So hybrid meaning sometimes I will use my computer to connect and sometimes I'll do it in person. Uh, my husband is a physician and he was seeing patients in person, you know, 100% of the time. With COVID, he started to, to see patients uh, virtually and now he spends, I'd say, 50% of his time doing it virtually, 50% in person. That kind of new reality, I think, is here to stay for a while as people have adjusted to the fact that virtual has its efficiencies and it works yeah. well. So it was interesting in advance of this week, I recorded a, a podcast with uh, Richard Spur, uh, who's here today. And, and he was asking me what's been my favorite uh, technological breakthrough of the last few years. And actually, the thing that made the biggest difference to me as a working mum is being able to do my parent teacher meetings online. <laughs> Because that meant I didn't have to take a day off work to keep informed as to what my kids are doing at school. And it's such a tiny thing, but it made such a big impact. And I was just thinking, it's not the, sometimes the big things that make a big difference. It's, it's the small things. I want to ask each of you, this is a little bit of an unkind question, but I think often we learn more from our mistakes than from our great successes. And particularly if we're trying to teach and inform other people, and I just wonder when it's come to either you personally or your business or your organization, um, or you know, when it comes to choosing investments, have you made any mistakes that you've learned from along the way that everyone else can benefit from? I'm going to be really unkind and start with GB. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm almost thinking making mistakes is almost the business that I'm in, unfortunately. So we think of our business uh, as uh, being driven by the power law, which is uh, very few things that we do will matter. Um, you know, maybe 10% of our investments will give us 90% of the gains that we make. So, uh, which means 90% of the time we're making a wrong call. So we are constantly learning from what we got wrong. And our biggest mistakes are not the mistakes we make where we lose money. The biggest mistakes are mistakes of omission, which is we didn't make an investment we should have, and so we missed this once in a decade type, 50 billion, 100 billion dollar company in the making. That is what we think about a lot more and think about how do you not miss those signals and how do you get better at Okay, so them. obviously I'm gonna ask you what you didn't invest in that you should have invested in. Well, I come from the India Southeast Asia region, so the biggest miss for us in India is a company called Flipkart, which turned out to be the largest 
e-commerce company and that got sold uh, sold to Amazon. Sorry, uh, to to uh, Walmart later. So that one, uh, we probably had an opportunity to invest in the seed round and have 30% of the company which we failed to see. 